What's up, everybody? About to get into it with some creepy and interesting videos today. Hopefully, all is well. Like, comment your thoughts. If you want to, you ain't got to, subscribe. Go here. And let's get on to it. You want to see? Oh, uh, that's like real thing, and not from a movie or something somewhere. That's crazy. Something about giants. Yes. yes. Toe bone giants. of 18 foot so tall human. Really big, believed yeah, to be Noah's from the Bible. the biggest thing I've got. This is from an 18 foot person. Estimated. Big toe bone. There it is. That is this part. Yeah, your very end big toe bone. It's been x rayed and this person had broke their toe, toe bone mm. and then it healed up. Years ago, they had dug up a grave that we believe was Noah's wife's grave. Verified by uh, a radiologist and a couple of physicians. None of them want to put their name on their statement. With a touch of arthritis. And this is the finger. This is this part of the finger. See, it's this, this, and this. بعد اذنكم انا في منطقه ال في ظهر العروبه بعد اذنكم انا في منطقه ال في ظهر العروبه لو سمحتوا التلات عروبه لو سمحتوا التلات سمحت يا جماعه today we'll be talking about the Hopi tribe also known as the Navajos they will speak about a time when we will go through this pole shift the energy is now spinning in reverse, which will amplify our sun and cause it to put out more energy. And the Hopis will call this the sun cycle. So before this disaster will take place, these ant people will come from underground and they will warn the Hopi tribe about this event that's about to happen. So right before this disaster will take place, these beings will come from the underworld. The ant people taught them about the cycles of life and in each new cycle or age, the old world will have to be destroyed so this new world could come into existence. The ant people told them that in each new age, it will bring chaos and destruction. The ant people told them about the old world ending in water and how this world will end in fire. They will go on to say that this will cause the people to go underground because they will not be able to withstand the light of day, the sun. They told the Hopi people that some people will ascend and go to this new world, and some people will have to hide in the shadows of the earth. The Hopi tribe will ask the ant people, how would I know? How would I know this time is upon my people? 
The ant people told them during this time, it would be spider webs in your skies. It would be steel rise of snakes slithering across your land and the waters will be filled with poisonous venom. This is the prophecy that the ant people gave the Hopi tribe. Now in most of your stories, they will worship a sky god that live in heaven. But the Hopis would state that their god came from below. They came from the underworld. The Hopis say heaven is below. The ant people would also tell them about a blue star that will appear in their sky. And this star would be known as the purifier. And they would state that this star is a real spirit and it signifies a new beginning. This blue star is here to bring balance on the planet. They would go on to talk about that no living thing would be untouched and we must learn to live in harmony with other spirits of earth, remembering that we are the caretakers. This star was put here to help us on our spiritual awakening and this would be the last prophecy. They would talk about the red star. It's nicknamed the destroyer. And this spirit will purge the planet of all low vibrational beings. In the Hopi mythology story, they will state that the ones who vibrate low will just fall into more chaos. They will have low vibrational thoughts and the sons of God will come and give their judgment. This story have a lot of deep science behind it. The red star and the blue star Kachina will be the two guardian angels of the North Pole and the South Pole and they will return Earth back to its natural rotation, which is counterclockwise. The rotation of Earth was once manipulated by star seeds on the planet, and Mother Earth is going back to her original state of consciousness. So the ancestors will come back in spirit to see who remembered the ancient teachings. The new world is being built, but the purifier have to leave its mark first. These are our relatives from different star councils and they will come to see how far we have evolved on our journey. I hope y'all like the lecture. Love and wholeness. See, when it comes to that, it's a lot to digest for me. I don't know. All I can do is just keep observing and observing. Yeah, like the... <laughs> no, I ain't gonna say it. It's a wow, wow. Have anybody noticed that in the last 48 hours, it's been very quiet on the planet, and this is why. Our sun is very active right now, dispersing a large amount of energy. This is highly intense charged ions and powerful solar energy, and this energy is increasing the vibration on the planet. So when we shift in frequency, you have to elevate with this energy, or you will be left behind. We have to detach from this matrix, family. It's very critical and important that you tap into your higher self, your higher states of consciousness. The X-class solar flare would be the largest eruption from the sun. But here lately, we have been having M-class solar flares. But these solar flares is starting to change. They don't just erupt anymore. These sunspots will stay open, spewing out energy. Usually, this blast will happen in the snap of a finger. But here lately, these eruptions have been lasting for a long period of time. This energy is here for us. It's time to take the power back, fam. I don't know what like, reaction that is. Or is that just alter film, make this a powder, step it away? Seems like every summer around August, 
things like this happen. We start seeing things that we normally don't see. This is out in California. I adjusted the settings on the camcorder to bring up the brightness and the contrast so you could see what's going on behind it because the original clips are very dark and you really can't see anything aside from the lights. This is a separate clip. Again, all of them are in California. Last year in August, we had issues where people were seeing things down in South America, California, and the military allegedly was called out in the Pacific for something that they alleged to have seen. Many people are speculating that the interdimensional beings or the things that are up in the sky actually live in the water, underneath the water. And that makes sense because the people that encounter greys always state that the body is very weak, fragile, slimy, and smells. Very void of any sunlight or anything in itself. These are all genuine clips. You can see them for yourself. I just wonder why the UFOs need all those shiny bright lights. Mm. Whether you believe in UFOs or not, that's up to you. I believe in God. I believe the time is near. I believe Jesus, Yahushua, is coming back. And I believe that we're being played on a grand scale. And people will fall away. There's a chance for you to come home and get saved and be with God. All you have to do is accept it. Everything I'm showing you can be verified and found online through various news sources. This video is just for educational, entertainment purposes only. Peace. This stuff right here. Make you this kind of stuff right here is why I don't play around in the water. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. Look at this damn thing. This is why I don't play around in the water. I don't do it. No kind of stuff right here. Make you this kind of stuff right here is why I don't play around in the water. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. Look at this I'll damn thing. This is why I don't play around in the water. I don't do it. No kind of stuff right here. Make you this kind of stuff right here is why I don't play around in the water. Look at this thing. No I could make a sperm out of your skin cells and an egg and fertilize that. So you can clone me. I could clone you. I won't do that because it's illegal. But biologically, we could do that. I can make organs, mini organs from you and test drugs. What we're doing in the lab is we wow. have... Personalized medicine. When you come to my lab and you have to promise you're going to come, I'll show you. We grow these mini brains in the lab, and we've got them from people that are predisposed to Alzheimer's or not. And we have a, a way to age those brains so that they're now 80 years old, even though they're only a few months old. And they lose their ability to fire electrically. They become demented in the dish. Little mini brains. On Instagram, I, I've shown some photos of these. They're pretty cute. And so we give them Alzheimer's and dementia in the dish. And then what we do is we have a system to turn on those three embryonic genes, OS and K, and those brains go back in age. But here's the cool thing. Alzheimer's goes away, that electrical activity comes back. Now we do this in a mouse. We make the mouse older, just let them age out, or we accelerate it, and we've been now reversing the age of those brains in the mice, and you can guess what happens. They get their memory ability to learn back. Unbelievable. Do you hear what you're saying? So People, I can't make this shit up. Once again, Ingersoll Lockwood called this shit, and I didn't know what this was for in this picture, but now it makes sense. Look at this. We're going to get back to this picture right here. I know you've all seen it a couple times, but if you look up in the right hand corner, you will see what's supposed to be the eclipse, what some of us believe is the black sun. And in front of it, there is a sandwich. All right. Are you keeping up, people? There is a sandwich in front of the sun, the eclipse. All right. Let me explain. It was all planned. We clearly seen the sun, and then we seen the eclipse, and then the eclipse was sandwiched by the sun simulator. When I tell you that I go to Ingersoll, and Ingersoll never lets me down, Ingersoll never lets me down. Watch the exit. Hey, NASA was supposed to shoot rockets at us. You guys stop. You guys stop. Whoa, whoa, look at that. Where the sun came forward. What's that all about? What is that? See it on the edge? Man, that's not... <laughs> Yo, man, what was that all about? 
was on a strike. There does seem to be some kind of a massive cover up of something. The earliest pictures we have of like these big cities are like from like the 1850s. And they're these massive cities and, they're, and they look very similar than they do today, actually, except for more grand looking, massive buildings. And there's like hardly any people out on the streets, like nobody. And sometimes in, in many cases, it looks like muddy streets. And it's like, okay, so where are all the people at? It's very odd to have a giant city like that with no people. And then when you when you start to see people later in like sometimes you have these early videos of like these cities like Paris and London and all of the people are dressed really nice, like dressed to the nines, like aristocrat looking people. And then you're like that. There's just something so off about this. Like I, I can't really kind of put my put my finger on it, but something's really off. And then you start to see the orphan train thing and you're like, OK, so wait a minute. These things have to be related. And that's why I started to make the connections like, wait a minute, the people who are dressed like that were not working in factories, right? <laughs> they weren't working in fields, they weren't working in factories. These people look very rich. So maybe the pictures with nobody in them in these big cities, maybe the, the orphan trains were related to the fact that they needed people to go work in the factories. And then if you go look in more old pictures, kids working in factories, kids working in fields, kids doing all these random jobs, and then you see the insane asylums. Okay, so between like 1860 and 1929 in America, there's 250,000 kids on orphan trains. Again, the population is much bigger now. That number is huge now. It's way bigger then. And then there was 150,000 people in insane asylums. Okay, so the math actually makes sense. Like that, were these the parents of these kids? And then the kids get shipped all around the world, all around the country, at least here. And I know it was a worldwide thing. And then you see like the things. So there's there's like zero insane asylums now. There was like 1500 of them in like 1900. There was like there's like zero orphanages now. Like all these things that are just they don't have them anymore. And if you go look at the buildings that were prisons, orphanages, and asylums, the and they're all these massive castle style looking buildings. You ever notice that? Yeah. It seems it seems very clear that, to me at this point that those buildings were repurposed. Because you would not build a castle and then turn it into a prison. You would not build a castle and then turn it into a sane asylum or an orphanage. Because they don't look like that. Like, why would you spend that much money doing that unless it was already there and they needed use for it and that's what they chose to use it for? If you believe kind of the mud flood story, and even if you don't believe, if you're not a Christian, you don't believe in the whole little season idea, you have to believe that the controllers or whoever you want to call them literally burned cities down, murdered people, threw people into insane asylums to hide stuff. They literally burned down the best buildings you've ever seen, but we're, that we've never seen, I guess now. You know, the best buildings ever created in order to hide something. So what could they be hiding? I think what seems very clear and obvious, it it's something you could not even imagine. Like, it's bigger than you can even imagine because that's the only reason people would do that. Right? Am I wrong? I mean, like, you're talking about a worldwide thing that this happened in order to cover up something. And the history books don't write about the reason for all the mud. They don't write about all this stuff. Yeah, there's nothing deeper. This is like the very bottom of the rabbit hole. There, there's nothing deeper than this because this explains everything. Don't be fooled. What's your thoughts about that? My thoughts is. I don't remember seeing a lot of these old buildings and this like reference when I was growing up, you know. I just I never seen it. I've been to a few libraries growing up and I just never seen it. I looked at a lot of books. I just don't remember seeing this until, you know, today. Even like, you know, being on social media in the past, like oh, y'all like I just never seen the reference of these old looking towns with these buildings that look ominous. So and could it be a mud flood? Possibly. Mud flood theory is very possible. By the alleged supermoon in this video, this is part of something called the Festival Planet Bruno in the Czech Republic.